guys welcome back to my channel so I missed last week's upload and I'm so sorry for that but I've been working on a new project like it's a personal project and I just been focused on that but I'm trying not to miss uploads again I'll do my best at least until college starts but in today's video we are going to talk about the murder of Ellie Gould I first heard about this case on an MTV crime show I don't remember what it's called I watched like two months ago um, and when I first heard about it I just thought I really have to bring this to my channel but if you guys are new here please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already I post videos every Saturday and if you want to suggest a case you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media my Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box and without any further ado let's just start this video so Ellie Gould was born on February 6th of 2002 she was the daughter of Matthew and Carol Gould, and she lived with her family in Colne, Wiltshire. She was a year 12 sixth form student at Hardenrich School in Shipman and was studying for her A-levels. She also had a mission to join the Mountain Police and study psychology at university. Her life was full. Um, yeah, she was perfect daughter, really. So in January of 2019, she began dating Thomas Griffin. They went to school together and they've known each other since year 7. And Thomas was Ellie's first boyfriend, her first love. And her parents approved of their relationship. Her mother said that her husband wasn't like overly mean on Thomas because he didn't talk much, but they just assumed he was shy. We trusted him. We welcomed him into our home. He celebrated her 17th birthday with us. Three months later, he murdered her. But then Ellie's exams were approaching and she wanted to focus on that and she kind of felt that relationship was not right for her. She felt like Thomas was rushing things. He was already talking about marriage and they were 17. So she decided to break up with him in early May. And on the night before she was killed, she told her friends that she felt like Thomas was suffocating her and that he didn't take the breakup well. She felt a bit suffocated and a bit um, trapped within it and that she didn't really know what to do because she's really independent. On May 3rd of 2019, Thomas, who lived in Derry Hill, was dropped off at school by his mother. He then emailed his teacher saying that he was feeling sick and caught a bus back home. But his mother also returned home, so he hid in his wardrobe until she left. When his mother left, Thomas took the keys to a silver Ford Focus and drove to Ellie's house. When he got there, he and Ellie got into an argument and he attempted to strangle her and then took a knife from the kitchen and stabbed her neck 13 times. After that, Thomas started to clean the crime scene. He spent an hour at the house trying to clean everything. He, and to clean it, he used clothes, which then he placed it on a plastic bag. He also washed his shoes in the kitchen sink and then placed a knife in Ellie's hands to try to make it look like she did it to herself. He then used her finger to unlock her phone and text one of her friends that was supposed to pick her up for school that she didn't need a ride anymore. Then Thomas returned home to change. He put his clothes on the washing machine and the bag with uh, blooded items he just dumped it in a woodland. While he was returning from the woods, a neighbor saw him and drove him back to school and then later his mother picked him up. And later that day he was snapchatting his friends like asking if anyone had heard from Ellie because he wanted to talk to her. He even made it seem like they had plans to study together. And he also texted Ellie's phone asking if they could meet. At around 3 p.m. on the afternoon, Ellie's body was found by her father. Thomas Griffin was arrested by Wiltshire police on the same day at around 6 p.m. Evidence was gathered from his phone and CCTV cameras tracking his movements and a neighbor who saw someone matching his description outside Ellie's house. Thomas also had marks on his neck and face that were consistent with defense wounds, probably Ellie trying to defend herself and save her life. At first, he denied everything. He said that he had not seen her that day, but then police matched the blood found on his shoes with Ellie's blood, so he was charged with murder on May 6th. He appeared at the Bristol Crown Court on May 9th, where a provisional trial date was set for October 28th. He did not enter a plea and was remained in custody. At a plea hearing on August 29th, Thomas pleaded guilty to Ellie's murder and he remained in custody to await sentences. Thomas' sentencing hearing took place on November 8th. Thomas wrote a letter that was read out loud in court. He said, I'm so sorry. I know my apologies and explanations will never be enough, but I hope in time I can show how truly sorry I am. He also claimed that his mental health was not good at the time of the murder. 
During sentencing, the judge, Mr. Justice Graham, described his actions as a Francis Knight's attack and the most appalling act on a vulnerable young woman in her own home where she should have been safe. The effects of her actions have not only snuffed out the life of this talented girl, but loaded pain on her friends and family. But it was ruled that the murder was not premeditated because Thomas didn't take the weapon to the crime scene. Thomas Griffins was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 12 years and a half before he is eligible to parole. And he only got 12 years and a half because he was only 17 when he committed a murder. But Carol Gould, Ellie's mother, doesn't agree with this. She thinks that he should have been trialed as an adult. Then Ellie's parents began a campaign to have self-defense classes taught in school because they felt like if Ellie knew like the basics of self-defense, maybe that could have saved her life. You've, you've decided that perhaps if Ellie was more full-armed. Yeah could defend herself more. This is a, an idea you have that perhaps she she might have escaped this death. Yeah. What are you doing about it? So at the moment we've started a petition and yesterday it hit 10,000 signatures. So we're hoping now that the par like parliament will hopefully be able to pick up on that and maybe actually make a change. Um, we're just hoping that pushing for this self-defense to be brought into schools will help prevent this happening from anybody else. Ellie Honestly, I really think that self-defense lessons should be taught in school because the world we live in today, we need to know how to defend ourselves. And Carol Gold also made a campaign to introduce the Ellis Law. Basically, this law will enable younger offenders to be treated as an adult when they commit a murder. And on March of 2021, the Bookland introduced a police crime sentencing and court bill that allows the law to treat future teenage killers as adults. And it will decrease the sentence to a minimum of 27 years. And although this law cannot apply to Thomas, at least it removes the rights of killers like Thomas to have their sentence reviewed. And Carol Gould described this change as a huge cloud that has been lived from above our heads. So that's all for this case. When I first heard about it, I was so shocked, like I just could not understand how someone so young can kill another person. They were just so young, they still had their whole lives ahead of them. I know like when you're young and you go to a, through a breakup, it seems like the end of the world, but it isn't. It's normal to be sad. Nothing gives you the right to end another person's life just because they don't want to be with you anymore. But yeah guys, that's all for today's video. As usual, leave in the comments your thoughts about this case. But yeah, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. I post videos every Saturday and if you want to suggest a case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye!